Hi everybody, it's James here, and welcome to this video looking at the basic tools you'll need to put in your toolbox to complete any modeling project you're working on. As many of you may know, I've done uh, quite a few exhibitions over the years with DEMU, uh, exhibiting uh, various models up and down the country and demonstrating how to do uh, different uh, modeling techniques. So, starting off with the box, you can see obviously we've had the, uh, the 12 inch metal rule there and the cutting mat, uh, and inside everything is neatly assorted into six different areas. So let's go through these now and see what's in here and what we need to do. So we'll start off uh, with the five in the tray. Um, there's a selection of bits in here, but the most important bit is the tea mug. This is important for two reasons. One, it's where you put your cup of tea, which is always good. And two, when it's not full of tea, it's where I store my tools. Well, the ones I'm actually using at the time. Rather than you have to dig through the tray in the box itself, you can just take out the few you need Store them in there, or your paint brushes, or whatever you like, and uh, keep everything nice and tidy. So, starting off then with these flat pliers, uh, we use these because they haven't got any teeth in the jaw. The reason for that is obviously to you don't do any damage to the surface or anything you're working on. Uh, Central piece of kit here is a pencil. It sounds obvious, but it's something you're going to need. Fine point on the end of these is uh, really handy because it's uh, quite thin with the lead. So when you're marking out and measuring, you end up with a big thick line, so it's possible to see what you're you're working from what you're doing. A couple of six inch rules is also quite useful, especially when networking on smaller models. Something I've picked up on the way is this uh, magnet on the end of a telescopic stick. It seems like a bit of a nothing thing at the time, but when you've dropped a small screw on the floor and you can't find it, it comes in very, very handy. It's also good for just holding bits on the side when you haven't got a pair of clamps or a uh, sort of second pair of hands. What I use instead of having a second pair of hands is one of these. It's uh, basically a pair of tweezers, uh, they're quite a strong spring on them. And as you can see, you can hold uh, just about anything in any position, so you can do anything you like to it. If you can't find one of those, I don't want to buy one, you can always use a simple clothes peg. So the same job, obviously, uh, hasn't got the same strength in the spring. Another piece of kit that I recommend everybody have is a set of files. You can't have too many files in your toolbox, so uh, every time you see some, especially different sizes, shapes and varieties, go and pick them up. Just one thing to watch out for, as you've just seen there, is that on some of the larger files you have quite a big tang, so be careful in using those. Now, moving on to the little areas at the back, let's put the cutting right down so you can see what we've got. We have electrical tape, it's quite handy because it's uh, quite good at adhesive on it, and you can use it more than once. This is washi tape, uh, which is very low adhesive, but it's quite good when you're fitting nameplates, so it doesn't leave any residue on the body side of the locos. This is white putty, and basically does what it says on the tin. It's great for filling in small gaps and cracks, anything you're working on with uh, plastic, resin, or metal models. Cocktail sticks, uh, ear buds, cotton buds, and uh, fine uh, little brushes, uh, like this one here, quite useful for applying oils, lubricants, paints, uh, and just working into little areas. Uh, this here is a paint pen, it's a 0.7 millimeter one, and I use this uh, in the place of a pencil when working with acetate, so you can mark out the edges before cutting. Uh, this is a white pencil, uh, as opposed to the normal graphite one you can see there. Again, used for working on materials where normal lead doesn't always show up. Micro drills, again, are something you must have in your toolbox. Really useful for many, many jobs. Of course, when you're using micro drills, you will need a drill chuck. Here's one I've uh, had for a number of years now. You see it's different size holes at opposite ends for working with different drill bits. Again, if you don't have one, seek one out. They aren't expensive, but they are vital. Another bit of kit I couldn't live without is my tweezers. These are five-point tweezers, and they're great for just about anything and everything, from holding small screws to digging bits out of your toolbox, especially when, like now, I can't get hold of the next thing I want to show you. This is my scalpel. It's a Swan Morton, and it's another piece of kit that, without, you're going to really struggle to do any sort of serious model making. So I'm going to do a variety of different blades, uh, and I've got uh, one or two in my toolbox here. Always keep a few spares with you because, sadly, it's really that difficult to actually crack one if you're pressing a bit too hard. Once you've cut through, always use a little bit of wet and dry just to clean edges before proceeding with gluing the models together. Another way of cleaning edges is using one of these. This is a glass fibre or microfibre uh, pencil. Don't touch the end because if you get the fibres under your skin, it's rather irritating. You can also get another brass tip. Speaking of tips, this one here is a uh, basically like a multi-tool screwdriver. As you can see, all the small tips uh, are held in the handle itself, and they're held in the end using a small magnet. 
these are quite good because you can get them from most sort of budget supermarkets and they're great for getting into the small screws you find on both of most models you can also get these uh, smaller screwdriver sets uh, this one here is basically just a sharp point i use for applying oil and lubricants and as you can see here these have got a uh, small tip but a longer shaft that's so you can get into the uh, screws that are buried deep inside the body shells like you find on backman 45s moving on for more bits for holding stuff Here's a lot of little G clamps. Now again, you might think you only need one or two of these, but the more you can have, the better, because you never know what you're gonna to have to hold, how many of them, and the type of material you'll be working with. So a bit of variety is uh, always of use. Something else that's very, very useful is this. This is a set square. Uh, it's quite an old one, and it's actually handmade, but you can buy them yourself for only a few pounds from most tool shops and uh, most Monroe exhibitions. Again, if you're scratch building or kit building something, such as a building, this is an essential thing to have in the kit, because without it, you won't get those corners the right shape. Something slightly different now, uh, which I recommend getting hold of, is actually a spirit level. A small one like this is ideal for when you're doing something like layout building. Make sure, first of all, the track is level, you haven't got adverse camber, and also your buildings are level sat on the scenery. Something I do try to keep hold of a lot, and I recommend to anybody, is offcuts and spare bits. Here you can see a bit of a selection of bits of old chain, metal weights, card, plastic cards, even a little bit of tin foil. All little bits that are very useful in the future. Here's a lot of excess bits from kits and detail parts that have yet to be used, and eventually we'll find a job for them, so never ever throw them away. Something else I recommend keeping hold of and not discarding is business cards. You see I've got a small collection of them just here. Obviously, we pick them up at exhibitions all the time, and they've usually got information for businesses or shops that uh, you want to go back to in the future. Well, once you've done that, you've now got a brilliant building material to sat in your pocket. As opposed to using something like mount board, which I've got a piece of here, which usually comes in about 3mm thicknesses, uh, the business cards are all variable, but still made of good rigid card, which is ideal for making many things. Here you can see I've made some interiors for some engaged cars. Something else that's quite good as a building material is actually tin foil. I saw a small piece of it earlier. Here you can see a large sheet, uh, which I've actually just finished using. That represents some leather on uh, the scratch bill I did recently on a water tower. A little tip for you while I think about it is uh, while you're at shows, pick up flyers, even for exhibitions you're not going to go to. Main reason being, on the back of them, you've got a free piece of notepaper to write down anything you need to remember from while you're at the show. And also, uh, it can be used as a modelling material. This is a set of calipers, which again, if you can get hold of them, really useful bit of kit when it comes down to doing any sort of scratch building. If I'm making uh, any parts of a locomotive, buildings for example, simply take a measurement of what you want to take a copy of, measure against it, and away you go. Another little uh, tip for you, which you've seen in previous videos, is to use coffee stirrers. These are great, they basically come for free, and you use them for mixing your paint and for holding models when you're painting them. Quickly move a few bits out the bottom of the toolbox and we'll look at something else. This is basically a crock clip uh, on a metal weight on a bit of wire. You pick these up around Christmas time and out of uh, little craft shops and bits. Uh, they're usually used for table centres, but they're ideal for again, holding small pieces of models while you're either working on them, painting them, or just want to keep them safe to one side. Something else you pick up uh, fairly easily are these Zuron cutters. Uh, Zuron are a well-known brand and do a range of different uh, items ideal for you know, cutting metals and plastics. I've got two of their different ones from the range here uh, and as you can see this one has a sort of pointed end which I use for cutting wire and uh, stripping the insulation off the end and also for cutting rail. The slightly shorter one is what I use for cutting plastic sprue and taking bits off kits. Speaking of kits again you find a little tin in the bottom of my toolbox is full of spare parts from kits. Again, bits that normally people will throw away. Keep hold of them because you never know when they could come in useful, especially for little scratch builds. Something else good for scratch building that, again, people throw away a lot is guitar strings. If you don't play the instrument yourself, you probably find someone in your family's circle or your family does. So when they come to change their strings, ask for the old ones. They're great for doing vacuum and brake pipes, and the ones that aren't wound are good for handrails. So, a bit of recycling and useful material. Something else that's quite useful to have in the toolbox, which I always keep, is elastic bands and blue tack. Blue tack is great for just holding bits down so you don't lose them and sort of keeping bits together while they're being glued together. Razor saws are also something that you should look to have uh, in your kit at all times. Not only are they a useful piece of kit, but it's something you need for doing long straight cuts. 
ideal for working with metals, woods and even resins. This is a handle which, uh, referring earlier to the uh, files, remember I said about the tang, well you want that on the tang to protect yourself from any sort of injury while you're working with the item. Once it's on there, there's no chance of you slipping and actually catching yourself and doing any sort of you know, serious lasting damage. So again, when you're buying your files, try and get some handles to go with them. This, as many of you recognise, is a Stanley knife, also as a craft knife. This is a slightly older one with a metal case uh, around the handle, but uh, the modern ones are all made of plastic. Yours is the same thing. Again, essential for cutting through thick plastic card and some thin bits of wood. More clamps. Again, you can't have too many of those. This is solder, which I've round, uh, around some plastic just to uh, keep it safe in the box, uh, which obviously we use for fixing certain metals together. For that, of course, you will need a soldering iron. This is an older one, uh, but more modern ones are now temperature controlled. I recommend one of those for any sort of new person starting in the hobby. Something else you'll be wanting with your soldering iron is flux. Got a bottle of it just here. Flux is a great product, and what it does is it allows the solder to actually flow through any joints and bits without having to overheat the material, so there's less chance of causing any damage. You just apply it with a brush. Again, keeping spare bits of wire, you know, copper and brass and steel is always good. Decal fix is also something you should look to keep in your toolbox at all times. When applying transfers to any model, it not only softens the transfer, but to makes it last longer, so there's less time from drying out and cracking over time, thus ruining the effect of the finished item many years later. The last thing we'll leave you with is wet and dry, also known as glass or sandpaper. Not only is it essential for rubbing down surfaces after you've done some filling or a bit of uh, cleaning off of old paint and whatnot, it's also great as a modelling material. I've used some recently to uh, felt the roof of a garage, obviously in model form. And that's basically it. The, uh, the last thing you need in your toolkit is a good selection of adhesives. Here you can see uh, a bit of a range of some of the glues that I use for various modelling projects and I shall look into these further in a future video. And there you go guys. Uh, so that is about all I can tell you about what you should need in your toolbox. So uh, hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching and bye for now.